Got it. Thanks, Zoom. Okay. Our <laughs> meeting is being live streamed now. All right. Perfect. So What's up, world? <laughs> live on Instagram as well. Now we're live on Instagram. All right. So we're here with another Jam Tube episode. I'm super excited to have Jameson here. Is that that's your name, right? That's yes, that is my name. Uh, people, call me, people call me Jay. Uh, can, okay. can, can be both. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, just for namesake, Jameson Rowe, right? From Wild, uh, who will be joining, what? You got it. <laughs> yes. Great. They'll be joining us uh, at Flow Jam this year. Uh, on the main stage, and I am super excited to interview you and to hear what you guys have been going on, because I know, like we said, before we became, before we became, before we got live, I was asking you that you have been on stage at Flow Jam before mm -hmm. when you were in, in Lovettsville at that amazing barn that we had on that 200 acre property, and yeah, so now you've started a new band and you're the drummer of that band. And I would love to hear how that kind of evolved, how, what you guys are up to in, because you're DMV, so yep. Virginia, Maryland, DC. Uh, and yeah, like, take it away. All right. No, that that's the, that's the perfect setup. Um, yeah, so uh, starting back, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, 2019 um, was, was when the band I was in at the time, uh, we were called Surprise Attack, and we played at Flow Jam, and as you mentioned, that barn, I showed, I showed the rest of the guys that barn, by the way, and they got immediately hyped, so oh. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, it's cool, and um, yeah, so when uh, that happened was in, you know, uh, as we all know, COVID then came through and being in a touring band uh, during that time did not uh, seem like the best occupation. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> what we, you know, kind of uh, the previous band I was in, you know, we went our separate ways and it was all good. Um, but, you know, uh, I knew, you know, that wouldn't last forever and, you know, live music would be back and just you know kept practicing but took a while to kind of find the right group of people to to gel with uh to you know actually like have the the commitment to put in the time and the you know the work that it takes to actually be a good band right. um and I, I think i think i found my people uh mm -hmm. which is wonderful um we're called wild and now that we had the time to to kind of get back off the ground um and we've got some material that i'm i'm pretty you know happy about that i knew i said all right i got i got to hit up you know i had this list i had this big contact document and looking through that thing after covid was like a graveyard it was okay. like yeah. Uh, this, it was like, does anybody that I used to like play with or, you know, do any, like, did anybody survive this? Um, you know, and I looked back through and to see that you were still throwing on flow jam. I knew I had to email you right away. Um, so that's kind of how this happened. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to being back to it. And it's, it's going to feel, you know, it's going to feel great. So I'm, I'm very excited for it. Yay! I'm really stoked to get back in touch because I know that when Surprise Attack broke up, it was kind of sad because I loved like your music. Um, but to hear Thank that, you. yeah, yeah, and you know, drumming is like definitely the backbone of a really, you know, like the drummer is a very important role. So I know everyone in the band is an important role, but oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah the drummer like you know gets it going for everyone right like gets the dancing going I think yeah and uh it's the one that people notice if you mess up like <laughs> right away there's it's it's True. a tough one to hide your mistakes so um you know it's it's got to be really really locked in and uh keep focused so <laughs> try to do that as best as I can yeah so 
anyways, I'm excited to see Wild play and you'll be excited to come to our new venue, which has an amphitheater. We actually survived 2020 and we, yeah, <laughs> we, um, we did a smaller uh, event in October of 2020 when the regulations mm -hmm. came back at like, okay, you can have 250 people outside for an right. event. So we went for it and it was really magical. And so um, that's when we started being in this space, but I'm excited for you to experience it with your new band. Thank you. How do you guys practice together? Like, where are you guys all located? So um, I, uh, I'm, I'm in Alexandria um, and I just got my, just, just bought my first house. So I am stuck here uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, but thank you. Yeah, no, it's, it's really exciting. And, you know, now I get to have this behind me <laughs> all the time. Uh, so the practice yeah. is uh, gone way up, which is great because now my neighbors are far away enough. I can not piss them off. <laughs> and uh, I can actually be the loud drummer that I am. So <laughs> that's great. Um, you, so you're not in like in a townhouse. So it's no, like a, it's it's like a house. Yeah. So um, just there. I finally have the space to be loud and have band practices. And it's it's great because um, that's that's always you know been a challenge, like renting and you know, share, you know, cohabitating with people. And I, I always say that's yeah. why I learned keys recently was because like I lived in a townhouse before I got here and I was like, well, I can't practice drums. So hey. I, I was like, well, I should probably learn an instrument that I can plug headphones into. <laughs> and wow. um, that turned out to be, uh, you know, worthwhile, but <laughs> missed my drums. So it's good to be back. <laughs> you taught yourself how to play keys? Yeah, I mean, well, uh, a, lot of people on, a lot of people on YouTube helped me, but <laughs> and different kind of like, you know, online stuff. So, um, it's definitely so, a work in progress. Um, it's not like I've been playing drums since I was probably 13. Uh, keys are a much newer venture. So, <laughs> I got a long way to go on that front. Do you play keys in the band or do you like focus on obviously focus on the drums? Yeah, uh, I do write some keys parts um, that I'll bring to, to our, you know, like keyboard player. Um, and so we, we kind of go back and forth on that stuff, but when we're playing together, it'll be, uh, all, all drums for me. Nice. And what, how would you describe your music? Um, I guess I would say that, uh, there's definitely the sort of like quintessential kind of like jam band um you know like uh influence a lot of us you know listen to a lot of you know like grateful dead like goose fish you know that kind of music where there's the big focus is on the live show where um you know if you go to see some bands that don't focus on improvisation between songs they just kind of play their album back mm -hmm. to front and mm -hmm. if you go see even some of my favorite bands that do that, I'm like, well, you know, I could have just stayed home maybe and, you know, listen to the CD uh, if you're just going to play the CD verbatim. Um, right. So I think a big emphasis on that for us is being able to to still play the songs very rehearsed, but be able to um, have some points where we're improving between uh, two rehearsed songs so that it's always kind of like that interesting ebb and flow where you are kind of, you know, if you're in the crowd during one of those type of shows, you're thinking like, oh, well, this is something new. It's mm -hmm. like live and in the moment. Mm -hmm. The ability to feed off of the crowd in that kind of scenario is is great. And it, it can't really be replicated. That's why you hear all the, you know, the crazy jam band heads who will tell you about like 1989, April 4th, if fish was the best day, you know, that kind of thing. Yes, um, I've been around lots of fish heads, and I am sort of one, but same, not same. in the capacity that I have friends at that are like, <laughs> yes. don't the show, know the set list, back and forth, know all the songs. I'm just like, I can appreciate the jam, definitely, and right. the improvisation and the and the skills and the instruments like super awesome but my brain can't keep that information in I'm, the, 
I'm the same way. I'm like, if you even ask me about some of my own sets I've played a couple of years ago, I'm like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but right. yeah, some people have that funny like catalog in their head where they can just <laughs> tell you like the time, place, and day of every show in the last 30 years. And I'm just like, well, that's great. But uh, I don't think I'm, I'm quite on that level. <laughs> yeah, no. So uh what um tell me like who consists mm -hmm. of the band okay so we've got uh you know um we've got wally vera who's our lead guitarist and vocalist um he's uh yeah it, he and i've been friends for a while um and we just you know clicked very well uh mm -hmm. once we started playing together and he had a spot where he had all the equipment um and we, you know, really started hanging out uh, a lot more in like 2019, uh, 2020, and, um, you know, would go over to his place when I could. And he had a group of guys over there that, uh, you know, he would jam with who I'd kind of come in contact with, you know, just here and there. But we all became really good friends uh, since then. And just after that, um, you know, decided like, hey, let's let's take this thing to the next level. We're sounding good. Um, and then we've got uh, Alexander uh, Vladimirovich, uh, Vlad, <laughs> it, we, uh, he's our uh, rhythm guitarist and he plays in, a, uh, he plays in some other bands around here that are, are excellent bands um, like Shamans of Sound. Um, and he's got just a ton of experience. Like the guy has played God, I don't even know, probably a, a lot of live shows. So he's just a great resource and, has like a lot of technical know-how too. Um, so when I'm struggling with the the soundboard at practice and can't troubleshoot it, uh, I'm very glad he's there to help me. So um, <laughs> thanks, Vlad. Appreciate you. <laughs> and then we've got uh, our saxophone player slash keyboardist. He switches. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Goes back and forth. Uh, and that's uh, that's our that's our man Sully, and he's awesome. And then we've got um, our new bass player, Dan. Um, and Dan and I used to play in a band together called Radii. Okay. So uh, once our original bass player said he, you know, uh, is going to be moving away, we're, I called Dan right away and it was like, oh, well, here's a bass player I already have, you know, some years playing with. So we locked in right away. Nice. Yes, because I remember you updated your photo. That's you. right. Yep. <laughs> Thank yes. you for swapping that out, by the way. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, I was like, well, the other one was creative too. I mean, yeah. I, know that, I know the reason why you swapped it out because at first I was like, why are they swapping it out? I like the I like the one. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so how did you come up with the name Wild? I mean, I can guess, but yeah. Um, I, it, it was more that, uh, like I, we, we all went on this trip together, um, okay. to like Lake Powell in Arizona. And oh my gosh, I love Lake Powell. It's so gorgeous. It, isn't it? Yeah. And so I had never been like West really. Like, I, I guess I went to like California one time, but that doesn't count. Uh, I just went to like San Diego, you know, it was like a city. I had never been like to the wild in the West, so to speak. So, um, yeah, we went to Lake Powell, we rented this boat and we like drove around through the canyons and just had an awesome time. And we found this like cave and I, you know, we were all talking about how we wanted to like get some video cameras and film a jam in this cave. And then it, it just became like, I don't know, wild was sort of like the theme of it. I, I it's hard to describe, but I love uh, it. it's so good, such a good story, especially but, I know exactly where you're talking about. Like, I'm so glad because, yeah, now that you're picturing it in your mind, I'm like, OK, she probably thinks this is less crazy now. So that's no, great. I know exactly like the like I paddled there. I did a paddle boarding trip there. Awesome. So, oh, that, that was beautiful. Yeah. So, so yeah. the we did go in like the middle of July, so it was hot. hot. <laughs> um, other than that, 10 out of 10 would go back. Yeah. Cool. That's a cool story. I like that. Yeah. So that's that's where it all sort of started. And uh, yeah, it's been 
it's been fun and um we just kind of rolled with it as a name and that uh, you know now it's really grown on me and I kind of like it I'm I I'm all about the wild totally fits yes. the name Low Jam likes wild. We like wild. So I'm, you know, really excited to see what you bring about at Flow Jam. We're just glad to be a part of it because as I was saying before, yeah, like just absolutely great time last time. And, you know, just it's sort of like the people that that really make it right. And to just have a, a festival like like this in my in, in my own backyard, so to speak, is just awesome because you know, used to, when I was younger, like go to travel 20 hours to a festival and, you know, meet a bunch of great people. And then, you know, kind of dying, driving 20 hours back. <laughs> and then, and then it's just so hard to like, stay in touch with those people. We all live 20 hours away from each other. And, you know, you meet your tribe and then it's like, oh, we'll see you never now, <laughs> which, which sucks <laughs> because it's just like too hard to really, you know, stay in, very close contact sometimes especially as the years go on but with having this kind of in the backyard I'm like man this is just awesome because you know these are people that are going to be you know like definitely have the same kind of pool of interests and you know live right by so um, it's one of those things where you can actually sort of like build and, and grow a community that's more sustainable just you're close together and I, I just think that's you know, freaking awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you know how I, I mean, I definitely am a big fan of like continuing to support artists so that it like, even what? if, you know, you don't, we like, even if you're not on the lineup every year, it's kind of yeah. like, want to support your growth as long as, you know, you're growing, we're growing, everyone's growing. And right. Um, to have, yeah, to have you now come from 2019, like it's also, you saw the real organic part of it. Like mm -hmm. there was my farm and then that farm and that like was just yeah. super beautiful, like Matt, I don't, I mean, I can't describe how like synchronistic everything has been as far as like mm -hmm. finding these venues and it like surviving and flourishing and growing like each year it just gets kind of better and better so um yeah it's it's very special that's exactly very very glad to be you know a part of it and the support of artists is just it's great because we really can, can help each other like grow you know like I think that's just awesome waving to Instagram and Facebook people so is that <laughs> just in case you're just joining us, we are doing a Jam Tube live interview with Jay Jameson, either or Roe, who is the drummer for Wild, uh, mm -hmm. who will be joining us over the weekend. Stop on, live. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they, yeah, so we're just sharing stories, getting more info because um the whole purpose of this is for people to get excited about what's coming up on the schedule. Who, like, who's the who behind, who's the who, who's behind, you know, the stage. Like, you know, I think I remember, didn't you wear a captain's hat? Was that you that wore a that, I, I think that's hilarious. You remember that. That was our, that was our guitarist, Tom. Uh, oh, yeah. He, yeah. He always rocked the captain's hat and okay. he's, he's like six foot six. So he sticks out everywhere he yeah. goes. I think I remember giving him a hug and like the <laughs> hat like stands out and yeah, that was, that was fun. So um, now what do you do? Like, do you have, is this your full-time gig now or what do you do outside of wild? Uh, no, not the, not the full-time. Um, I'm like, a, a project manager at an IT company. Um, so get to, yeah, do that. And, um, ever since COVID we're, you know, work remote a lot, but going occasionally. So, um, it's kind of a nice little hybrid thing going on. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't miss uh, sitting in a car 10 hours a week. That's for sure. <laughs> right. I know the elimination of not having to go into traffic and like go to right. a job to sit at a desk because that's what they thought was like 
working Working. hard, you know, being at your desk. Like, uh, I'll tell you a little story. Like, (laughs) you know, before I became a full-time entrepreneur, I worked at the World Bank and there was a time Mm -hmm. that I lived in Percival, Virginia and commuted into DC. And I, um, and I, at one point, like was doing this for a contract that was $17 an hour. And I would take the bus like from like either Percival or Leesburg, like into DC. And the bus ride was like one of my hours of like going there, but I was willing to do that. It was crazy. I mean, eventually I obviously got better contracts because I stayed until I no longer Mm. uh, stayed because I literally just like, they're like, you don't belong here. You don't belong here. That was like the main message. And I was like, (laughs) and then I was like, yeah, you're right. I don't belong here. I don't belong here. But yeah, just, you know, like the ability to work at home and not have to like worry so that you can Mm -hmm save that time and instead of sitting in traffic you could be playing your drums like or exactly and and, oh my gosh yeah it's it it felt like you know sometimes even after you finished your work and you were in there it just felt like you're still like chained to your desk and it's like well this feels like adult time out you know (laughs) like it was just uh yeah just the worst and and thinking back on it too you know because uh used to kind of do like pretty close to like you know, I wouldn't say like full-time touring, but it was, you know, let's say three plus days a week. Um, and Absolutely. it would often be like, you know, plenty of hours away. So it'd be like, all right, Wednesday night, rehearse after work, after, you know, driving to and from working all day. All right. Four hour rehearsal, pack up everything. All right. Maybe I'm asleep by one and then, uh, go to work the next day, leave, play a show and maybe Charlottesville, you know, maybe I've driven there, drive back home. I'm home by three, go back to the office, do it again. And then gone all weekend. And then somehow stumble into the office and not get fired on Monday. And (laughs) thinking about that, I'm just like, I don't know how I survived, but, um, yeah, I'm just glad for the, Uh you know, ability to kind of like do a little bit of, you know, now it feels a little more sustainable that I could like pursue music on that kind of level at some point again um just with not having to like switch in and out of a tie between like a tie and a tie dye it was like this weird like you know double life thing going on that just felt like unsustainable for sure were you the coolest one in the office? Like, did everyone know you were in a band? <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, I didn't feel like I, I didn't feel like they'd get it. So I don't know if I like told really that many people. Like, there's a couple people once I got to know them, I was like, all right, uh, you know, after work, come to my show. <laughs> but um, everybody else, I was just like, ah, I don't know. They're <laughs> I don't know if they're gonna take me seriously after this. <laughs> right. So yeah. That was that was kind of the struggle, right? I don't know, but really, it was just like I don't know. Maybe there's there's definitely a, a dedication there to to be able to do it. So yeah, seriously, it's it's like once you're out of it, though, you're like, how did I do that? How did I? I how did I survive that? I yeah lots of lots of things um just I was thinking about promoting like when I first was Mm -hmm. going flow jam and getting the word out there and like all of the events that I would go to and you know just distributing flyers talking about it trying to like educate people on it like being that that person that you need to be when you're like either Mm -hmm. starting or like when you're really trying to get something off the ground or when you're in a band and like bands travel, bands like want wider audiences, yeah. how are they gonna do that? they're going to travel. So, um, but yeah, like, I don't know if it's my age or maturity or like my systems that I've been able to build that na- build now in the business that have helped me at least feel like I don't have to do that anymore. Right. And I just kind of like depend on, on others to like, mm-hmm repeating the word and I will say this this just came in yesterday hold on one second okay 
Ooh, the anticipation. <laughs> I just, I ordered so many stickers. So many. Oh, stickers. nice. So, oh, man. Yeah, you got a lot. I love it. That's awesome. A lot of stickers. Yes. <laughs> Oh, well, there was this really good deal on Sticker Giant. So I just mm -hmm. like went for it. And it was like, I don't know, maybe $30 more to like double your order. So I was like, let's just, just do, do it. it. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> so, I love it. Yeah. These are our special 10th year stickers. So after this call, I will ask you your address. So we're not live giving out your address, but I've got like, yeah. stickers, we've got flyers, we've got posters, like this is mm -hmm. the year that we get good at the printed flyer distribution, because I think yep. we can do better, we can do better. I, and I, I think that does like reach people, you know, too. So um, I, I think that's great. Yeah. And yeah, the online game, I've got that. Like that was, that's what I did. Corporate world marketing. I can tell. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I I done, I've done some small festivals that, you know, I, and there, there wasn't this like organization and just like ability to get the word out and like definitely seeing that here. And I, I, I like it. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that because it definitely is a skill mm -hmm. uh, and one that I don't, I don't pay myself as much as I got at the World Bank, but you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, but that's the investment, right? Uh, investment. Working for yourself. It's my thing, or it's, you know, and it's bigger than me. It's definitely something that I mm -hmm. uh, didn't do as originally as a business, but then had to kind of like figure out, okay, how can I make this into something that actually makes money so everybody can keep going and succeed. Exactly. Like putting on things like this and making them successful. A lot of, you know, I've seen it, as I mentioned that list before, you know, of like the sort of like the smaller kind of like DIY festivals. And, and I know a couple, uh, you know, guys who tried and they were like, oh yeah, I'll just, it's like throwing a party. And it's, <laughs> uh, I, and I'm sure that that statement's probably hilarious too. <laughs> yeah, it's really a lot, but you know what? I like, because it started in my backyard and it was mm -hmm. kind of this like thing that I wasn't afraid of, you know, cause I had the security of my own backyard and my parents yeah, which yeah. sometimes was like more of a, I have to negotiate all these things <laughs> that, you know, are now <laughs> like standard in a contract and all these things. But exactly, uh, yeah, it was, I think that's what gave us a win to be able to survive everything that we've been through mm -hmm. um, and to come out in our 10th year to like have, you know, people like you keep coming back and to know us and to see yes. us, what we've been doing. Um, so before we go too much longer, I do okay. to uh, ask you a question that I've been sure. asking everybody since you did do a lot of touring. Mm -hmm. What has been the weirdest slash most interesting slash like, you know, if you like scary could be scary, scariest thing that happens <laughs> on the road while traveling to a gig or to and from. All right. Uh, I have one that is just my um, it, immediate there. And this is a story I hope never gets topped. <laughs> it's uh, it's as weird and ridiculous as as I ever want it to go um, and excited this uh oh yeah th this is this is a fun one all right uh okay so we got uh invited to to play this the show in in Philly uh one time and it was one of those where um the like day of the event and we're getting close they ch kind of change it and it's like hey hit us up when you're close and we'll tell you the address and that was like posted in the event so you already know it's going to be one of these like sketchy kind of they're like avoiding the cops kind of situations where i guess if you like you know change the address on them it, it throws <laughs> throws them off your trail or something i guess that's the the strategy here was it a warehouse party yes and it ended <laughs> up being a warehouse party in like like what looked like in an abandoned like you know town in like philly and so 
we go there and we're just like, well, we're too, you know, too deep now. Let's, let's keep going. <laughs> and go in and there is like, it's weird. It's like in this warehouse, it's like everybody from like 18 to like 70 years old, all nationalities, like everybody, it was like such a, a mixed crowd that was like, oh, this is like, interesting but it was like not what i would expect in a warehouse <laughs> in like in an abandoned part of the city um philly. so yeah in philly and not that like that's any scarier than like dc Baltimore, yeah detroit, whatever maybe i i maybe detroit maybe a little <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> it was uh yeah it was interesting and then um you know people were like uh we, I thought we were going to have an, you know, an opening act that was going to be a band or something. Um, and this, you know, woman gets on stage and just like starts uh, stripping, but is wearing a like metal bra and panties. And she pulls out like a Dremel saw, like, you know, something you'd like cut wood with and starts hitting it on the metal so that sparks go flying into the crowd. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and, and the crowd is going wild. I, sure. It's, it's like really they were, you know, expecting such a thing. And, uh, and then, so that goes on for a bit. She starts swallowing swords. It's a whole thing. Um, but then starts like, <clears throat> putting like clothes pins all over herself like you know like oh wow yeah and like and I I mean puts them everywhere uh yeah. and I'll, I'll leave the rest to your imagination but uh at this point, what, what's that is she naked at this point yes with clothes pins everywhere okay got you hanging off of everything wow. um <laughs> wow and for the, you know, th there was a finale there too. This is your opening act. I love it. How are you supposed to follow this act? That, that's exactly what I said when we turned around because as she's standing there and then, you know, pulls out the biggest clothespin of it all, clips it, the crowd <laughs> goes nuts. She grabs the mic and turns around and goes, end up next is surprise attack. Give it up for them. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! Did you guys kill it though? I bet you killed I, it. I mean, I feel like it was—we were playing for our lives at that point. It was like we we just got to because how do you follow that act? It was, it was nuts. Wow. Um, yeah, we ended up playing there till like four a.m. Sold every last bit of merch we had. It was the weirdest experience ever. Um, yeah, that was that was a fun one. <laughs> I love it. You can't. You can't, uh, you can't experience those things without being open to a little mystery, you know? I mean, can't, can't buy memories like that, you know? Eyes attack. That's literally <laughs> what happened to you. Like you were like surprise attacks. It pretty but, much. Yeah. It was almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy at that point. <laughs> it, it, is. it is. That was um, too good. Okay. Yeah. That's a good one. That's been one of the top stories that I've heard after I've, I've interviewed several people so far. I have um, some fun photos when, when we're hanging out at, at, at the festival. Slow jam. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully you'll have some cool merch because we're going to yes. have a big merch tent. For awesome. All oh my gosh. Yes. We will, we will bring some fun stuff which makes me realize I have to get on the merch bandwagon. Got to get that merch. I was too busy focusing on yeah. that. <laughs> no, like a Flow Jam shirt, uh, you know, with like the poster that you had or like a Flow Jam, you know. Yeah, like, uh, we're thinking like, you know, the rainbow. Yeah. The, the mountains in the background and then like it's saying Flow Jam Festival. But like maybe the 10th year or two. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a vote. What do you guys think? Oh, hey, guys. I don't know if they'll answer, but um, yeah, I, mean, is, I, mean, it, I feel huh? like that's special, you know, like with yeah, like the tenth year design, you know, yeah. like, and everyone's been um, real complimentary about this design, which I'm very excited about because it is awesome. I do um, agree. It's you know the designer lives in Bulgaria. No way. 
Yeah. She, I like, I did this, um, I posted it on Upwork mm -hmm. and I went through about like 20 applications and people, there were some good people and people that had done festival work before, but yeah. something about her art, I was like, I like it. And I took a chance and then she came up with three designs and this one was like an obvious, like, this is great, you know? Yeah. No, no brainer. <laughs> this one. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so I'm excited merch I'm excited to have merch that says wild on it yes we got you this is okay. gonna be so much fun you know yeah. like we're you know really like only got a couple couple things going on this summer because we want to just prioritize like the quality the quality over the quantity and and we're we're, we're all about it we're going in <laughs> Love that. I agree. Quality over quantity. That is one thing that I keep in mind when, um, you know, producers or, I mean, I don't, it's not like I hang out with a ton of producers or know them, but, yeah. uh, you know, the idea of getting lots of people to your event obviously is appealing, but Mm -hmm. um, you know, I really value the quality of people that come to Flow Jam and yes, that, that it is a, a smaller network, but a really like expansive network. Like we've got like people that like really have, you know, like. Agreed, so. yeah. yeah. Hey, it's, it's about the right people, not the, you know, quantity of uh, going to those 40,000 person fests uh, are a little, you know, it's just a little too hectic sometimes. It, it is, unless you're in a big space, like if you have the whole desert, like you do a Burning Man. Yeah. Like, you know. I think this year we would, we would love to have 500 to 800 ticket sales. And mm -hmm. if we get there, that'd be awesome. That yeah, it's awesome. We cover our expenses, which is great. Yep. And uh, everyone makes money and everyone has a good time and we're all healing and growing and it's great. I'm excited. So speaking of tickets, they can, everyone who's listening right now, we have, we just actually, for the first time, um, we've never done this before, but just because we, we did stack our lineup and it's really great. Um, we have done day passes. So we, we, we have day passes up now, but we've never done evening only passes. And this is like your last resort. If you can't come mm -hmm and enjoy the workshops and you only can come one night or one evening this you now have the opportunity to buy an evening pass so um that's awesome i think uh so it opens the doors to more people seeing our lineup and just kind of being in the space and then maybe deciding that they want to come back and do the workshops and buy a day pass the next day or whatever but it's yeah we're trying to like expand the network of people coming in because we're ready now like we're we're solid our team is ready and we have such an amazing lineup like yourself so i'm excited very happy to be a part of it and that's a that's a cool additional offering too because yeah I'm, I'm sure that i know some people who would you know appreciate the extra flexibility there and you know that might show them that hey i should come back tomorrow <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we're always trying new things. We've always got new things going on. So why not, why not expand that a little bit for, you know, I was also thinking like the neighbors who might not, you know, might want to see what's going on. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, the neighbors are great. We at Verdun and I know I'm like going over, we're almost at like 45 minutes, but I'll just, in this quick, quick little thing. And then I want to ask you where we can find your music and all the things. Of course. Um, but the neighbors at <laughs> Adventure Bound actually have a, um, a, uh, like a wildlife sanctuary. So there's zebras, there's wolves. I mean, they're not like out and the, the zebras are out and about, but the wolves are like, you know, but yeah. they've got like all these, you know, exotic animals and they're super awesome. And they come to flow jam and they have a great time. Um, but yeah, oh, the neighbors are real great. No way. All right. That, that alone. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know some people who will want to come just for that too. Uh -oh. <laughs> 
Yeah. And we're going to try to set up like a property tour so we can get a tour of, of his, uh, like his, his farm of wild, wild animals. Right. Oh yeah. We I feel like we could do something with that wild, wild animals, but yeah, we, we need to take a take be criminal some... not to. <laughs> and photos next to some zebras. That'd be cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, literally. All right, that that um, idea is perfect. <laughs> okay, we're gonna set it up. Done. Um, okay, well, before I take all of your time, because I am gonna go see the Mario Brothers movie tonight. Oh, pretty uh, good thing. 3D things. version. Yeah, we're, I'm gonna go see the 3D version of the Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> so, uh, this has been such an enjoyable conversation. I'm, I'm having so a blast. We were able to connect and. Yeah. I am loving these jam tube episodes because I don't always get the opportunity to spend so much time with everyone and the people that have been, you know, coming on to the jam tubes. Like I'm so excited to be able to spend, you know, four days with everyone and, or however long you're going to be there to That's like, awesome. you know, see you guys in person. So how can we connect with you? Um, where would be a good place for for us to find your music and yes. tell us? So uh, wild underscore the band uh, is our Instagram handle. Um, that's where you'll find most of the like probably the most up to date information on us. Um, we've got a YouTube channel with some live performances. Uh, if you just type in wild the band, um, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see some of the live performances on there. Um, and then we've got our debut EP coming out in the next two months. So at that point, we'll be on all the usual Spotify, you know, YouTube music, all that. So um, got a lot of fun stuff in the works, but um, a lot of that you will be able to hear before it comes out at Flow Jam. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're hyped. Um, all oh, right. Yeah. Well Thank you so much. And I'm going to end our lives and then, yeah, send me a message with your address so you can help me spread these all over Alexandria. Is it that you are? Yes. And then we've got, uh, you know, people, we've got our bass player in DC. We've got um, guitar and sax in Fairfax. Um, Great. Yep. Okay. I'm going to send you a lot Even of, me. Yeah, if you guys, you know, you know what's up. Like you're, you, I know that was one of my like reasons why I wanted to work with you guys again, because I remember Surprise Attack being super good at marketing. And I was like, yeah, it's that, important. I love people who are good at marketing. It's at important. Least, right? It's important. It's so people important. People so, don't want to go to empty festivals and, I, you know, bands don't want to play to nobody. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, we got to get the word out and we want to hang out with people. Totally. And we want the right people there that like need this because it's, yeah. I mean, no one, no one's really doing this. We're kind of special. So I agree. <laughs> um, by the way, if you see this sticker or if you see a poster and you'll see this too, there is a secret code on here in written in this little tiny thing. So it'll tell you what to do to get a little percentage off of your ticket when you see these. Ooh, the secrets. I love it. The secret sauce. Or subscribe to our newsletter and you'll probably get the secret code in the newsletter as well. There we go. Um, <laughs> okay, guys. Well, this has been super, super fun. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, and everyone who's on Facebook, everyone who's on Instagram, thank you for joining us. Let us know if you have any questions about what's happening at Flow Jam. Um, you can connect with Wild there at Wild the underscore the band on Instagram and check out our website on the lineup tab. <laughs> All their info is there as well. Um, so yeah, please purchase your tickets. If you haven't already, we are like now six weeks away from opening our doors. We are earlier this year than we ever have been. So if you're not used to buying your ticket at this point, you better start thinking about it. <laughs> Um, because we're not too far away, which is a little scary for me, but I'm also very excited and I feel very, uh, at least prepared, you know, prepared on time. I'm on time, at least better than last year, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> um, getting better and better. So again, thank you so much. And I'll connect with you after we end this live. Bye guys.
Dun, 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 dun. And this is where it gets funny because I like don't know how to. Oh, there we go. There's a stop button. Yeah. 